This lecture is a continued discussion of generative probabilistic models for text clustering. In this lecture, we are going to uh, finish the discussion of generative probabilistic models for text clustering. So this is a slide that you have seen um, before. And here we show how we define the mixture model for text clustering and what the likelihood function looks like. And we can also compute the maximum likelihood estimate to estimate the parameters. In this lecture, we're going to talk more about uh, how exactly we're going to compute the maximum likelihood estimator. Now, as in uh, most cases, the EM algorithm can be used to solve this problem uh, for mixture models. So here's the detail of this EM algorithm for document clustering. Now, if you have uh, understood how EM algorithm works for topic models like a PLSA, and I think here it will be very similar. And you just uh, need to adapt uh, a little bit to the, this new mixture model. So uh, as you may recall, EM algorithm starts with the initialization of all the parameters. So this is that's the same as what happened before for topic models. And then we're going to repeat until the likelihood converges. And in each step, we're going to do E step and M step. In the M step, we're going to infer which distribution has been used to generate each document. And so we we'll have to introduce a hidden variable uh, ZD for each document. And this var variable could take a value uh, from the range of 1 through k, representing k different distributions. And more specifically, basically, we're going to apply base rule to infer uh, which distribution uh, is more likely to have generated this document or computing the posterior probability of the distribution given the document. And we know it's uh, proportional to the probability of selecting this distribution P of theta i and the probability of generating this whole document from that distribution, which is a product of all the uh, probabilities of words for this document, as you see here. Now, as in all cases, it's useful to uh, kind of remember the normalizer or the, uh, or the constraint on this probability. So in this case, we know the constraint on this probability in the E step is that all the probabilities of Z equals I must sum to 1 because the document must have been generated from precisely one of these K topics. So the probability of being generated from each of them should sum to 1. And if you know this constraint, then you can easily compute this distribution uh, as long as you know uh, what it is proportional to. Right? So once you uh, compute this product that you see here, then you simply normalize this, uh, these probabilities to make them sum to 1 over all the topics. So that's E step. After E step, we would know which distribution is more likely to have generated this document D, and which is unlikely. And then in the M step, we're going to re-estimate all the parameters based on the inferred Z values or inferred knowledge about which distribution has been used to generate which document. So the re-estimation involves two uh, kinds of parameters. One is P of theta, and this is the probability of selecting a particular distribution. Before we observe anything, we don't have any knowledge about which cluster is more likely. But after we have observed these documents, then we can uh, collect the evidence um, to infer which cluster is more likely. And so this is proportional to the sum of the probability uh, of z sub d j is equal to i. And so this, this gives us all the evidence about using topic i or theta i to generate a document and we put them together and again we normalize them uh, into probabilities and then so this is for p of theta sub i now the other kind of parameters are the probabilities of words in each distribution or in each cluster and this is very similar to uh, the case of PLSA 
And here we uh, just pull the counts of words that are in documents that are inferred to uh, have been generated from a particular topic, theta i here. And this would allow us to then estimate uh, how many words have actually been generated from theta i. And then we normalize again these uh, counts into probabilities so that the probabilities on all the words would sum to one. Note that it's very important to understand these constraints as they are precisely the normalizers uh, in all these um, formulas. And it's, it's also important uh, to know that uh, the distribution is uh, over what? For example, uh, the probability of theta is over all the k topics, and that's why these k probabilities were sum to one. Whereas the probability of a word given theta is a probability distribution over all the words, so uh, there are many probabilities, and they have to sum to one. So now let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the simple example of two clusters. Uh, I have two clusters. I've shown some initializer values for the two distributions. And let's assume we randomly initialize uh, two uh, probabilities of selecting each cluster as 0.5, so equally likely. And then let's uh, consider one document that you have seen here. There are two words, uh, sorry, uh, two occurrences of text and two occurrences of mining. So there are four words together. And medical and health did not occur in this document. So let's first think about the hidden variables. Now, for each document, we must use a hidden variable. Right? And before in PLSA, uh, we used one hidden variable for each word, right? because that's the output from one mixture model. So in our case, the output from a mixture model or the observation from a mixture model is a document, not a word. So now we have one hidden variable attached to the document. Now the hidden variable must tell us which distribution has been used to generate the document. So it, it's going to take two values, one and two, to indicate the two topics. So now, how do we infer which um, distribution has been used to generate the D? Well, it's to use base rule. So it looks like this. In order for uh, the first topic, theta 1, to generate the document, uh, we, uh, two things must happen. First, uh, theta sub 1 must have been selected. So it's p given by p of theta 1. Second, it must have also been uh, generating the four words in the document, namely uh, two occurrences of text and two occurrences of mining. Uh, so that's why you see the uh, numerate has the product of the probability of selecting theta one and the probability of generating the document from theta one. So the denominator is just the, uh, the sum of two possibilities of generating this document and you can plug in the numerical values to verify. Uh, indeed, in this case, uh, the document is more likely to be generated from uh, theta one, much more likely than um, from theta two. So once we have this probability, we can easily compute uh, the probability of z equals two, given this document. How? Well, we can use the constraint, right? So that's going to be one minus uh, 100 over 101. So now it's important to note that in such a computation, there is a potential problem of underflow. And that is because if you look at the numerator, the original numerator uh, and the denominator, it involves the computation of a product or of many small probabilities. Imagine if a document has many words and it's going to be a, a very small uh, value here. It can cause the problem of underflow. So to solve the problem, uh, we can use a normalizer. So here you see that we take an uh, average of all these two uh, distributions to compute uh, another average distribution called a theta bar. And this the, the average distribution will be comparable uh, to each of these distributions in terms of the quantities, uh, the magnitude. So we can then divide uh, the uh, numerator and the denominator both by this normalizer. So basically, this normalizes the probability of generating this document by using this average uh, word distribution. So you can see the normalizer here. And since we have uh, used exactly the same normalizer for the numerator and the denominator, the whole value of this expression 
is not changed. But by doing this normalization, you can see we can uh, make the numerators and the denominators uh, more manageable in, in, in that the overall value is not going to be very small uh, for each. And thus we can uh, avoid the underflow problem. In some other times, we sometimes also use logarithm of uh, the product to convert this into a sum of log of prob probabilities. This can help preserve precision as well. But in this case, we cannot use logarithm to solve the problem uh, because there's a sum in the uh, denominator. But this kind of normalizers can be uh, effective for solving this problem. So it's a, a technique that's, that's sometimes used for in other situations as well. Now let's look at the M step. So from the E step, we can see uh, our estimate of which distribution is more likely to have generated the document D. Right? And you can see D1 is more likely from uh, the first topic, whereas D2 is more likely from the second topic, etc. Now uh, let's think about what we need to compute in the M step. Well, basically we need to re-estimate all the parameters. Let's first look at the P of theta 1 and P of theta 2. Well, how do we estimate that? Well, intuitively, you can just pull together these Z, um, probab uh, Z probabilities from E step, right? So if all these documents say, well, they're more likely from uh, theta one, then we intuitively would uh, give a, a high probability to uh, theta one, right? So in this case, so we can just uh, uh, take the average of these um, probabilities that you see here, and we obtain a 0.6 for uh, theta 1. So theta 1 is more likely and then theta 2. So you can see the probability of theta 2 would be naturally 0.4. What about these word probabilities? Well, we do the same and the intuition is the same. So we're going to see, well, in order to estimate the probabilities of uh, words in uh, theta 1, we're going to look at which documents have been generated from theta 1. And we're going to pull together the words in those documents and normalize them. So this is basically what I just said. Uh, more specifically, we're going to, for example, um, use all the counts of text in these documents to estimate the probability of uh, text given theta 1. But we're not going to use their raw counts or total counts. Instead, we're going to then discount them by the probabilities that each document uh, is likely uh, being generated from theta 1. So this um, gives us some fractional counts and then these counts will be then normalized in order to get the probability. Now, how do we normalize them? Well, these probabilities of these words must sum to one. So to summarize our um, discussion of generative models for clustering, well, we show that a slight variation of topic model uh, can be used for clustering documents. And this also shows the power of generative models in general by changing the uh, generation assumption and changing the model uh, slightly, we can achieve different goals and we can capture different uh, uh, patterns in text data. So in, in this case, each cluster is represented by unigram language model, a uh, word distribution, and that's uh, similar to, uh, in a, to a topic model. So here you can see the word distribution actually generates a term cluster as a byproduct. A document is generated by first choosing a unigram language model and then generating all the words in the document using this single language model. And this is very different from, uh, again, topic model, where we can generate the, uh, the words in the document by using multiple uh, unigram language models. And then the estimated model parameters will give both a topic characterization uh, of each cluster and a probabilistic assignment of each document uh, into a cluster. And this probabilistic assignment sometimes is useful uh, for some applications. But if we want to mm, achieve harder clusters, mainly to, uh, to partition documents into uh, disjoint clusters, then we can just force a document into the cluster uh, corresponding to the word distribution that's most likely to have generated the document. We've also uh, shown that the EM algorithm can be used to compute the maximum likelihood estimator. And in this case, we need to use a special normalization technique uh, to avoid all underflow 